Hey everybody, Chris here from Varsity Gaming, and welcome back to the second episode of Semester 2 in Siege School, the 22nd episode overall. Today we're going to be talking about the new operators introduced with Operation Chimera, Finca, and Lion. For the first time ever, we are receiving two attacking operators instead of one attacker and one defender. This is something I personally don't agree with, not because it creates an imbalance at all, it's just that playing defending is now going to be boring for the next three months because absolutely nothing has changed. Meanwhile, on the attacking side, it'll be a lot more fun because you have two new operators and a bunch of new strategies to try. All you have on the defending side is just trying to adapt to this new attacker-oriented meta. And although I don't agree with it, I will say that this season has had the biggest impact on the meta than any previous season before it. Most seasons will introduce maybe one operator that actually changes the meta, and usually it won't even be that big. The last season to release an operator that really impacted the meta was definitely Velvet Shell with Mira. It took a few months for people to find out how actually useful she was, but she did completely change the game. So while it's nice that both operators actually have a huge impact on the meta, it sucks that it's only on the attacker side and really not on the defender side. But anyways, we're getting off topic. Now to discuss Finca and Lion. The first one we're going to talk about is Lion. This is the operator that, as far as I've been able to gauge, the community overall really considers the most powerful of the two. At least the pro players think so. Lion is the French operator who's part of the CBRN division of Rainbow, but he's originally from the GIGN, or Gigan, as I'll probably call it. Meaning he would be working alongside Twitch, Monty, Rook, and Doc. He's a two-speed, two-armor operator with an aerial drone called the EE-1D. This drone can be used to detect defender's locations in real time using echolocation. And it'll also slightly shake the screen of every single operator in the game, both attackers and defenders. Every time Lion is picked, you'll be able to see the aerial drone flying above the map, just sitting there. And it's important to note that it is completely indestructible. Because if it was destructible, that means defenders could run out, shoot the drone, and prevent Lion from using his ability the entire round. Lion is able to use this drone three times throughout the round. Each time he uses it, it has about an 18 to 20 second cooldown. Looking at the footage, it was kind of hard for me to judge exactly when the cooldown started, but it looks like it's somewhere between 18 to 20 seconds. So when Lion uses his ability, he deploys his drone with a three second timer. You can see at the top of the screen it will be visible to all attackers and all defenders. This 3 second timer is a warning. This means the drone is preparing to scan. Once the 3 seconds are up, it will start to actively scan. So defenders are able to move around while it's white, but as soon as it turns yellow, that's when the drone will actually be scanning and looking for changes in location. Also one thing to note that I only just noticed while I was editing is that the active scan only appears yellow to the defenders. On the attacker side, it's still white. If a defender moves at all while it is scanning in the yellow phase, they will be detected by the drone and will continue to be detected until the phase is over. It doesn't matter if they stand still, once they've been scanned, they will continue to be scanned. So even if you move just for 0.1 of a second, you will still be scanned for the rest of the phase. The way to avoid being detected is to not move at all. So this means not moving your joystick or WASD one tiny bit. Or if you're in range of a mute jammer, you can't be detected there. Realistically, this doesn't make much sense, but I think Ubisoft just realized that Lion needed some form of a counter. And before people ask me in the comments below, no, Vigil does not counter Lion. It literally makes no sense for him to, don't try to start an argument about this. Yes, it doesn't make sense that Mute Jammers block the echolocation, but whatever, he has some form of counter for the team. People keep telling me, oh, look at Vigil's ability, it says he can't be seen by drones. Those people don't get it. Vigil's device wipes his image from a camera feed, not from echolocation. So it would make literally no sense for him to counter Lion. Could it be changed for potential buff? Yes, I'll agree with that. But for now, no. Anyways, back to Lion's gadget. So as long as you don't move at all while it's scanning, you won't be detected. There's only one exception I've been able to find, and it's with Mira, and it only happens sometimes. It's fairly inconsistent. If you're putting down your black mirror and you finish putting it down when it starts scanning, sometimes you'll be detected. My only theory as to why this happens is because sometimes the black mirror will push Mira away so that she's not inside of it. The only place that I found it happens almost 100% of the time is in the basement of Oregon in the closet. And I think it's just because it's such a small space. Otherwise, I have no idea why it happens. While editing this video, I actually did find some footage which had another inconsistency. If you're a defender and you're revived while the EE-1D is scanning, you'll be detected once you're standing back up and you're no longer in a down but not out state. I don't think this is intended, I think it only happens because your player changes from one state to another, but it technically shouldn't happen because you're not moving at all. It's just your character model is updating. Beyond that, I haven't found any other inconsistencies. All other actions you can do as normal as long as you don't move. So you can barricade doors, you can reinforce walls, you won't be detected. As long as you don't push any of your movement keys, you're fine. 
Let's move on to his loadout. For his weapons, he has the V308, which is the only new gun for his kit, and it's essentially Mirror's Vector, both with a 50 round drum mag, and slightly higher damage, and an ACOG. His other two primary guns are the 417 Marksman Rifle, which is what Twitch has, and the SGCQB Shotgun, which is what all the Gigan operators have. For his sidearms, he has the Universal Gigan handguns, which are the P9 and the Revolver. And for his secondary gadgets, he has access to a Claymore and Stun Grenades. My personal choice for his best loadout is for his primary weapon to be the V308 with an ACOG and either a flash hide or a compensator depending on how fast you shoot, and a vertical grip. And then for his sidearm, the P9, unless you have black eyes for the revolver, in which case equip that shit because it's black eyes, so you gotta main that. And then for his secondary gadget, I think stun grenades are his best friend. The reason why I say stun grenades over a claymore is because stun grenades can actually be used with your ability to flush out people, while a claymore really doesn't do much besides cover your back. And that's it for Lion's loadout. Now we're gonna move on to Finca. Before I get into her loadout and her ability, I want to just do a little bit of a rant. The most annoying part about Finca is that she has so many fucking bonuses and counters in the game, and it's not listed anywhere in the actual game itself. She upsets me simply because Ubisoft is adding so many aspects to an ability, but refusing to mention it anywhere where players actually have access to. The only places where they mention it are on the live stream panels and sometimes in the patch notes, and not even fully in the patch notes. If you go to the full official patch notes for Operation Chimera, they only mention three of her bonuses, when in reality she has nine bonuses and six counters. So unless players go out of their way to find out what her bonuses and counters are, they're really not going to know until they discover it in-game. So Ubisoft needs to get their shit together and actually list all the bonuses and counters in-game so that people know what the fuck's going on. Because even I had to look up all the bonuses and counters just to make sure I had everything. Anyways, that's enough for the rant, let's move on to the actual ability itself. Finca has the ability to deploy nanobots to assist her team. She gets 3 uses and they last 20 seconds each. The cooldown for the nanobots is 20 seconds, which means that each use of the ability can be used in tandem. And before I forget to mention, I'm probably going to swap constantly between calling her ability the nano boost or an adrenaline surge. Technically its name is adrenaline surge, but I constantly flip flop between the two. So let's list the bonuses. And it's important to remember that this ability applies to all attackers who are still alive. First bonus, the nanobots grant 20 health which can go over the 100 health limit and does not go away until the boost timer is up or until the operator's taken 20 health of damage. Bonus number two, attackers have increased resistance to flashbangs. Originally it was going to be that flashbangs only lasted 30% as long and they only had 50% intensity, but this was quickly nerfed on the TTS when they realized that was way too powerful and now instead has 50% length and 100% intensity. So the flashbangs will still affect you just as much as anyone else, however they'll go away 50% quicker. Bonus number 3. Grismont slash concussion effects are reduced by 70%, or completely removed if the person is concussed when the nanobots get deployed. So if you get Grismont and then deploy your nanobots 0.1 seconds later, you won't get concussed at all. And bonus number 4. This also applies to Echo's yokai disorientation. If an operator is disoriented and Finca uses her nano boost, the disorientation will immediately go away. And bonus number 5, all attackers are more resistant to barbed wire. The barbed wire will slow down attackers 40% less than normal. Bonus number 6, Finca can revive down teammates, setting them at 5 health and then plus the 20 nano boosted health. Bonus number 7, all attackers have a quicker aim down side time by 50%. It basically means that all attackers will have angled grip on their gun. Bonus number 8, all attackers recoils reduced by about 50%. It's kind of hard to judge, but I did do a quick test here, and you can see that it is much, much easier to control. It was hard to get exact values because recoil is random, but based on this quick test, you can see that recoil is reduced by about 50%. And lastly, attackers also reload guns quicker when they're nano boosted. All right, and that's all nine of the bonuses. Now we're going to move on to negatives. These are all the hard counters to Finca. Counter number one, Legion Goo Mines cancel the Adrenaline Surge. If an attacker is boosted by the Adrenaline Surge and then they step on a Goo Mine, they immediately lose all benefits of the ability. Counter number 2. Smoke Canisters do double the damage to all attack operators who are nano boosted. Normally Smoke Canisters will do 15 damage per tick. However, when nano boosted, the attackers breathe at a faster rate, which means that they inhale more, which means that the Smoke Canisters deal 30 damage per tick instead of just 15. Counter number 3. Pulse can detect attackers who are boosted up to 14 meters away when normally it's just 9 meters. Counter number four, Echo's Yokai drone can cancel the Adrenaline Surge. If the Adrenaline Surge is used before the disorientation is applied, it cancels out the Adrenaline. 
But like I mentioned earlier, if the adrenaline surge is used after the disorientation is applied, it cancels out the disorientation. So they're both counters to one another. Counter number five, Thinka cannot activate her ability when she's in range of a mute jammer. Since it's an electronic device, it cannot be used. And counter number six, she cannot revive teammates who are down in frost traps. If a teammate's down in a frost trap, they have to be picked up manually, and the adrenaline surge will not lift them up. And that is it for all the bonuses and negatives. This is something that you're going to really want to remember because Fink and Lion are definitely going to be a huge part of the meta for the next two or three weeks at least. So try to remember all of these effects and use them to your advantage. And he's moving on to Finca's loadout. For her primary weapon, she has the Spear 308 Assault Rifle, which is the new weapon in the game. And she also has access to the 6P41 LMG that Fuse has and the Sausage 12 Shotgun, which Capcan and Tachanka have. So basically her only gun is the Spear 308 because you really shouldn't be using either of the weapons on attack. For sidearm, she has the PMM and the GSH-18 like all other Russian operators. And for a secondary gadget, she has stun grenades and breaching charges. Personally, I'd say her ideal loadout is the Spear 308 Assault Rifle with any of the non-ACOG scopes, preferably either Reflex or Holographic, and then for Barrow, either Compensator or Flash Hider, and then the Vertical Grip for the grip. The reason why I say a non-ACOG scope is because with Finca, a lot of time you'll probably be rushing the enemies, so you don't want the ACOG in a close quarters combat situation. And with reduced recoil, Having a non-ACOG scope will mean literally zero recoil at all. You'll be able to control it just by slowly moving your mouse down at a snail's pace. And even though I say that, I still run ACOG on her because personally I prefer ACOG over everything else. And for a sidearm, you should obviously bring the PMM because it's the superior pistol. And for secondary gadgets, I'd say bring stun grenades over breaching charges because since her ability provides some immunity to stun grenades, use them to your advantage. Use a nano boost, flash out an entire room, even if you get blinded, you'll still recover 50% quicker than everyone else, and then kill all the enemies who are still blind. And that is it for her loadout. So we've completely covered Fink and Line. Now this is the part where I'd normally talk about strategies that you can use with the new operators, but it is still the first week. It hasn't even been a full week since the operators have been released, and it's not even available for everyone yet, only season pass holders. So there isn't much information I can give you guys when it comes to strategies. Really, the only strategy we found to work is to go complete rush meta. And this only really works on some maps and in the lower ranks. Basically, what you want to do is run what I call the full aids combo. On attack, your team should consist of Blitz, Finca, Lion, Dokubi, and Ash. If you want to bring a hard breacher like Hibana or Thermite just to get in through some walls, then replace Ash with either of those. However, in a true rush situation, you don't want to be going for hard breaches. You just want to be running straight to site. So I still think Ash is a better pick. But anyways, you get all these people, you have Blitz run in first, you have Lion set off his scan, and then Finca boost the team. And then you also have Doka be call at the exact same time. And the defending team will be pretty much fucked. When they have a Blitz running right at them, they're basically forced to move, which then makes Lion scan track them in real time. And if they don't move, then you have Doka B's phone ringing, and you can hear exactly where they are. And since you have a shield as a front line, it makes it a lot harder for them to kill the people in the back line. So you'll basically be able to just completely overwhelm the defending team on site. You quickly take the objective and then wait for the roamers to come back and pick them off. The only other strategy I can really talk about is something that we haven't put into too much practice but it does seem to work, and it revolves just around Lion and the bomb game mode. I found one of the best uses for his gadget is that once you get the diffuser planted, you just keep setting off the Lion scans as quickly as possible. This way it wastes a lot of time for the defenders and makes it almost impossible for them to approach the diffuser without you knowing that they're there. If you save all three scans for when a diffuser is going down, you basically waste a total of about 24 seconds for the defending team. So if your team's not rushing and you're playing line, then I heavily recommend holding onto the scans and not using them until the diffuser is down. Or use it as a way to get the diffuser down. Set it up so that the EE1D scans while your teammate is planting the diffuser. This way the defenders really can't push you or stop him from planting. And really that's all the information I can give you guys on strategy. As more strategies develop, I'm sure I'll make videos of them with actual gameplay instead of in Siege School. So just keep an eye out for those. So that'll be it for the information segment of this video. Now we're going to move on to the quiz section. For those of you who don't know, basically I will ask you guys a question, give you 10 seconds on the clock, and you come up with an answer. After the 10 seconds, I'll give you my answer, and if you think your answer was close enough, then give yourself a point. At the end of the quiz, I'll have a scoreboard to show you how well you did based on how many questions you got right. And with that all covered, let's get into the questions. Question 1. This pertains to Lion. If a defender is being actively scanned by the EE-1D drone, and then they run within range of a mute jammer, will they continue to get scanned, or will it stop? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. And 
time's up. The answer is, they will no longer be scanned. As soon as a defender runs within range of a mute jammer, they are completely immune to all of Lion's drone abilities. So if you're ever in a situation where you're about to be detected by the drone and you want to get back to sight, just run within range of a mute jammer and as soon as you're there, you're safe. Question number two. This one's for Finca. Do the nanobots heal missing health? So for example, if an attacker is at 60 health and Finca uses her nano boost ability, will the attacker be healed up to 80? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. <laughs> And time's up. The answer is no. The nanobots do not heal missing health. How it works is essentially a shield is put on the operator. If an operator has 60 health, they will then be given 80 health. But once the ability runs out, they lose that 20 and go back to their original 60. However, in the same situation, if they're at 60 health, get boosted to 80, and then they get shot down to 55, once the ability is over, they will stay at 55. It's not like they lose an extra 20 health. So a nano boost is a temporary shield instead of a heal. It doesn't work the same way that Doc Stim Pistol works. Question 3. What happens if Finca nano boosts someone with a goo needle in their leg? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is, if an attacker has a goo needle in their leg and then they get nano boosted, they will not get any of the effects. Legion's goo needles essentially have an effect that's passive. As long as the needle is in the person's body, they cannot be nano boosted at all. And even once they remove the goo needle, they don't then get the benefits of the nano boost. They have to have no goo in them at all once the nano boost goes off. Question four. This one's gonna be a bit of a scenario. So an attacker has 100 health. They then get nano boosted up to 120 with the shield. They run into a goo mine. Goo mines deal 10 damage on initial contact and then 8 damage every tick. So if this attacker with 120 health with the shield walks into a goo mine, how much health will they have after the initial damage is dealt? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is 100 health. So even though the lesion goo mines normally deal 10 damage, when an attacker has 120 health, they're nano boosted. As soon as they touch the goo mine, they lose that benefit. However, I think it applies the damage before they lose their benefit. So technically they'd go down to 110 health, but immediately go down to 100 because the nano boost effects are gone. Personally, I thought that they would immediately go down to 90. However, that's not the case. They will still continue to take eight damage per tick after that. If they do not take out the goo needle, there's no changes there. And now it's time for the bonus question. What is Finca's biggest downside in the entire game? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is, Finca's biggest downside is her Russian optics. The Russian CTU is the only CTU in the entire game that has different scopes. And unfortunately, they're way worse than all the other scopes. I just imagine how powerful she would be if she had normal sights instead of the shitty Russian ones. And that will conclude today's episode of Siege School. And as promised earlier, here are the scores based on how many questions you got right in the quiz section. Let me know in the comments down below how many you got right. And quickly, two plugs before I go. First plug, I stream Siege every single day on Twitch. I start at noon Eastern Standard Time and usually go until about 4 o'clock. Feel free to check it out by following the link on the screen or in the description below. And plug number two, I do have a Twitter. I do make occasionally funny tweets, so maybe check it out. Link for that's also on the screen or in the description down below. And that's it for my plugs, and that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you learned something new. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.